Hey guys. I hope everybody's doing well, having a good weekend. Hope you like my self-inflicted haircut. Uh, very stylish. But, you know, I never have to look at myself. So it's, I feel sorry for you guys, but not a big deal on my end. All right, so today we're going to shift from VO2 Max, which we've spent a, a number of lectures talking about how to improve VO2 Max, uh, specifically in the periphery, looking at how we increase mitochondrial mass, um, the number of capillaries going to the muscle, and enzymes for fat and, and carbohydrate oxidation. Now what we're going to do is we're going to shift to those other things which are probably better predictors of endurance performance, specifically economy and lactate threshold, which we're going to roll together into this uh, speed or velocity or power at lactate threshold. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to make that shift, and today we're going to start with looking at economy. And specifically, what we're going to do is we're going to, um, you're going to be able to define the roles that muscle plays within the body. And so um, if you were in EXP 10 with me, I told you that muscle did three things, had three different jobs or three different roles. That's because the fourth one is a little bit hard to conceptualize. So we keep it, we keep that kind of held for the upper division course. So this time, if you, now we're going to go through, there's going to be four roles that muscle plays within the body. And you're going to be able to define all of those. You're going to be able to demonstrate an example of each type of movement. You're going to be able to state the relative metabolic cost of each type of contraction, how economy, so our movement economy, is related to the role that muscle takes. So if the muscle is working as a motor all the time, it's going to cost a lot more energy to do anything than it is if it works in other ways. Okay, you're going to be able to, again, state the relationship between stiffness and economy. And as you'll see, a lot of what we're going to talk about in the next two lectures is closely related to the lecture that we did with injury prevention. And that's why, you know, when we talk about musculoskeletal biomechanics, it's very closely tied with injury. But it's also very closely, as we'll see today, tied to performance. You can be able to, again, draw the regional mechanical properties of a tendon, which you can all already do. Um, explain the negative aspects of stiff tendons, which you already know, because if the muscle is, or if the tendon is stiffer than the muscle is strong, you're going to get a non-contact muscle pull. And then you're going to be able to describe the difference between motor and strut endurance. All right. So the easiest way to start this is to ask the question, what does muscle do? And really, the reason that this is a question is because um, everybody has this idea of what muscle does. But what I want you to do is I want you to keep an eye on this runner in the orange third from the bottom she's way behind she's like what four or five maybe five meters behind right now and now watch what watch what happens you're going to see that she's going to come through and she's going to win by a mile and she's going to win by a mile in a new world record okay so this is going to tell us a little bit about what muscle does because what you can see is she is a double leg amputee she is running on two graphite cheetahs so those cheetahs are graphite energy return legs um, every other runner in the field has one biological limb and one graphite limb. So what you can see is what a biological leg is good for. You can see the runner in fifth from the bottom here. She's got a biological leg that has muscle that allows her to overcome inertia. She stopped at the start. She's going to get up to about 20 to 30 meters. She'll have reached top speed by about 30 to 40 meters. So that means that the muscle is really important for that first 20 to 30 meters to get up to speed. Once you reach top speed, you can see that she's going to be about five meters ahead of her competitor. But once you get to top speed, now everything matters about energy return. And these graphite energy return um, legs, what they are is they're incredibly efficient. So they're incredibly efficient to the point where what you can do with an energy return uh, graphite leg like this, a cheetah, is that the cheetah is going to store and return about 60% of the energy that goes into that individual. You and I and our biological limbs, those biological limbs are able to store maybe about 30% of the energy. So we hit the ground and 70% of the energy from that impact is going to be lost. It's going to be lost as heat, it's going to be lost as vibration, it's going to be lost in lots of ways the energy return from the graphite is going to be much, much higher. So you're going to get more like 60% energy return. That means if you have one biological leg and one graphite leg, you're going to be somewhere in between, say, 40 45% um, of the energy that you put into the leg is going to come back. And so your efficiency or your economy goes way up 
if you've got these kind of graphite limbs. And that's because these things store and return energy better. So what that means is if we want to go fast, we want to have smaller muscle mass because once we overcome inertia, muscle is just going to be in a hindrance. And we want to store and return energy as well as we possibly can. And that's really what we're going to look at today and tomorrow.